I'd like to congratulate Charles Fadell and the Center for Curriculum Redesign for this book on four-dimensional education. It makes a powerful contribution to the field and by resisting the temptation to predict the future, but instead focusing on the tools that help policymakers and educators to imagine the future and to get ready for 21st century learning. There's no question that the demands on learners and thus school systems are evolving fast. In the past, education was mainly about teaching people something. Now it's about making sure that individuals develop a reliable compass and the navigation skills to find their own way through an increasingly uncertain, volatile and ambiguous world. These days, we no longer know exactly how things will unfold. Often we are surprised and need to learn from the extraordinary and sometimes we make mistakes along the way. And it will often be the mistakes and failures when properly understood that create the context for learning and growth. A generation ago, teachers could expect that what they taught would last for a lifetime of their students. Today, schools need to prepare students for more rapid economic and social change than ever before, for jobs that have not been created, to use technologies that haven't been invented, and to solve social problems that we don't yet know will ever arise. So how do we foster motivated, engaged learners who are able to conquer the unforeseen challenges of tomorrow and not to speak of those today? Charles Fadell points out the dilemma for educators, namely that the kind of skills that are easiest to teach and also easiest to test are precisely the skills that are also easiest to digitize, automate, outsource. There's no question that state-of-the-art knowledge in a discipline will always remain important. Innovative or creative people generally have specialized skills in a field of knowledge or a practice. And as much as learning to learn skills are important, we always learn by learning something. But educational success is no longer mainly about reproducing content knowledge, but about extrapolating from what we know and applying that knowledge in novel situations. But simply, the world no longer rewards people just for what they know. Google knows everything. But for what they can do with what they know. And because that's the main differentiator today, Education is becoming more about ways of thinking, involving creativity, critical thinking, problem solving, and decision making. About ways of working, including communication and collaboration. About tools for working, including the capacity to recognize and exploit the potential of new technologies. And last but not least, about the character qualities and social and emotional skills that help people live and work together. Conventionally, our approach to problems in schools was breaking them down into manageable bits and pieces and then to teach students the techniques to solve them. But today we create value by synthesizing the disparate bits. And this is about curiosity, about open-mindedness, about making connections between ideas that previously seemed unrelated, which requires being familiar with and receptive to knowledge in other fields than our own. If we spend our whole life in a silo of a single discipline, we'll not gain the imaginative skills to connect the dots where the next invention will come from. The world is also no longer divided between specialists and generalists. Specialists generally have deep skills and narrow scope, giving them expertise that is recognized by peers but rarely valued outside their domain. Generalists have broad scope but shallow skills. And what counts increasingly are the versatilists who are able to apply depths of skill to a progressively widening scope of situation and experiences, who gain new competences, build new relationships, assume new roles. They're capable not only of constantly adapting, but also of constantly learning and growing, of positioning themselves and repositioning themselves in a fast-changing world. And perhaps most importantly, in today's schools, Students typically learn individually, and at the end of the school year, we certify their individual achievements. But the more interdependent the world becomes, the more we rely on great collaborators and orchestrators who are able to join others in life, work, citizenship. Innovation, too, is now rarely the product of individuals working in isolation, but an outcome of how we mobilize, share, and link knowledge. 
So schools need to prepare students for a world in which many people need to collaborate with people of diverse cultural origins, appreciate different ideas, perspectives, values. A world in which people need to decide how to trust and collaborate across such differences. And a world in which their lives will be affected by issues that transcend national boundaries. But the book of Charles Fadell goes one important step further. It recognizes that knowledge and skills are only part of the equation and in themselves are not sufficient to guarantee individual and social progress. The bankers who ruined our financial system were probably highly creative and also critical thinkers. And some of those with the most entrepreneurial mindset and the social skills are running the mafia rather than serving the country. So the book extends the picture beyond knowledge and skills and also looks at broader character qualities such as empathy, resilience, mindfulness, curiosity, courage, or leadership, as well as at meta competencies and values. And doing this in a thoughtful and highly systematic way is what distinguishes this publication from a lot of other talk about 21st century skills. Of course, in many schools around the world, teachers and school leaders have always worked hard to de help learners develop these kinds of knowledge, skills, and character qualities. But the status quo has many protectors. As anyone will know who has tried to make room in today's crowded school curricula for new educational content. The results have often been the kind of mile-wide but inch-deep curricula that dominate today's classrooms and that severely constrain the development of deep knowledge and the use of advanced pedagogy. A key reason why we find it so difficult to build school curricula around the needs of the modern world is that we lack organizing frameworks that can help prioritize educational content and structure the conversation systematically around what individuals should learn at what stage of their development. Four-dimensional education provides a first-of-its-kind approach to address precisely that. Its main innovation lies in not presenting just another one-size-fits-all list of what individuals should learn, but in defining the dimensionality of the space in which educators, curriculum planners, and policymakers can establish what their students should learn in their context and for their future.